Hey guys, it's Gomez Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on augmented reality. I'm going to be showing you how to apply post-processing effects with URP in augmented reality. And in the previous video, I show you how to apply the bloom. In this video, we're going to be focusing on depot fill, film grain, and lastly, we're going to be looking at vignetting. The videos that you see playing behind the scenes are a demo of how this will look when you push to your device. So I'm gonna jump into Unity. We're gonna be looking at a couple of the scenes and also keep in mind that this project is going to be available in Patreon. So you're gonna be able to get it in Patreon right away. And then it's going to be available thereafter in GitHub. So let's jump into Unity and I start looking at it. All right guys, so let me show you the three demos that I created to basically demonstrate some of the post-processing effects with URP in AR. So I'm gonna be playing all of these videos and explaining to you what they're doing. So the first one is going to be the depot field. You can kind of see how there is, you know, there's blur and as I get close to each of the cars, the blur, it's going to, it's going to go away because I'm using, you know, depot field and the aperture and the focal point are set up in a way that if I get, you know, close to the car, the cars that are closer to me are going to be the ones that are more clear and then everything on the back, it's blur. So if you look at this one right here, this one also has some blur, but I'm also using an effect called the film grain and actually it looks really cool. I didn't think this was gonna look that cool, but it gives you that sensation of, you know, the old style, the old TVs, especially because I grew up in, you know, where we had black and white TVs and, you know, that was that was years, years ago. And the, the effect gives you kind of like that old school. So, this one has the AR props, so we're getting real world reflections. I also have the film grain, and there's also depot fill in, in this one. So this one right here is vignetting. So if you guys are familiar with vignetting, this is similar to you know, the vignetting that you see on games, where you know games like Limbo, they have rounded corners. So we also have vignetting you know, that we can also use for augmented reality. So those are some of the demos that I have. I'm going to show you the project in how I set up those post-processing effects. So this project is going to be make available via Patreon this week. And I'm going to also make it available in GitHub after a week. So I normally do that for people that want to access my code as early access and you can download it for, you know, early access. And then when it becomes available, you can also download it in GitHub. So what I'm gonna do when I start doing is this is the, one of the first things that I have. So I have four scenes right now. The main one is going to be based on the previous video. This is just a, an AR experience that allows you to take screenshots. You can basically use plain detection. You can use image tracking. So there's really no post-processing effects on this one. I think I just have a bloom. But the ones that I want to focus on are going to be the other three, which is going to be film grain, depot fill, and also vignetting. These are fairly simple scenes. So if I look at the depot fill, most of the setup is similar to the one that I had on the previous video. The only thing that I did change in here is just the different effects and components that I have attached to it. So if you look at the main camera and we're actually going to be collapsing that, there's a volume on the main camera and that's going to be the same with the other additional scenes. So if you look at the volume and you click on the profile, you're going to be able to see the, oh, let me actually not move this because I don't want to move that. And let me just move it back. And so if you look at the other profiles, you can see that I have one matching each of the scenes. So this one is AR depot fill, AR film grain, and AR vignetting. So they're going to correlate to the scenes that I'm gonna be showing you. So for instance, this one we're looking at depot fill. So we're gonna be looking at the AR depot fill. Basically, this is a scriptable object. I'm pretty sure that's how Unity implemented it, but it has different properties in here. And if you look at it, all of them have bloom. So if I look at the depot fill, or if I look at the film grain, or the AR vignetting. So they all have bloom. And also in this one, in this case, that this is vignetting, I also have tone mapping. And I think all of them have tone mapping as well. This one has tone mapping. And all of them have depot fill. So that's when you see, you know, when you saw in the demo that I, that I had depot fill on all of them, that's that's because I, I was cloning this, this different effect. So if we look at the example that I'm looking at right now, which is the depot fill, you can see that I have these options. So if we go into the scene view, and actually I'm gonna change this from ISO so that I can get close to, it's actually easier to, you know, to manage the scene. So, and then I'm gonna just click on the on the camera, just get, and I'm basically holding Command Shift F. 
And if you don't, if you notice, I'm getting close to the cars, and those cars. Let me actually change the view just a, li a little bit more. Let's do something like that. There we go. So you can see that the cars on the back are blurred out, and that's because I'm using, you know, depth of field. I have the focal distance set to very low. And you can change that and see how I'm changing the value, and as it's incrementing, the things that are closer to the camera are becoming more clear, and anything behind it is is basically blurred out. So you can play with these settings. I you know, I change the focal, focus distance. I also change the focus, the focal length. So you can also change that and see how the length is changing. And if you guys are camera guys, you probably know more about this than I do. I just know that this creates just kind of like that bokeh effect where everything, you know, behind the scenes is blurred out and then anything close to it, it's basically clear. And then you also have, you know, an, a setting for aperture and also blade count and some of these settings I haven't really, I haven't really touched. So that's what depth of field is. Let's go ahead and jump into the other scene. We're gonna go into scenes. We looked at that one. Let's go ahead and look at the film grain. And I'm, I'm not gonna change the, save the changes because I wanna keep the changes as, as they were. So in this one, you can see that I'm getting some dots in here. And this is that old school look and feel that I, that reminded me when, you know, when I was a kid where, you know, we didn't have 4K TVs at the time. It was only, you know, the, the, the really old look, I don't know what the proper term is, but I know that it, that it gave it this look. And, you know, I have on this one Bloom, Tone Mapping, Depot Fill, Vignetting, and the one that I am basically want to emphasize is going to be the Film Grain. I can also change this if I want it to not be as strong, so you can see how the dots are going away and then how they're coming back in if I increment this value. I just wanted to exaggerate it so that you guys could see that. I can also change the, the film, the actual grain size, so they have different options in here, and this is something new to, to the Unity. I remember I don't remember having these options, so now you can, you know, you have these presets that you can use if you want to have a thing. If you want to have a thing too, I guess that's that's a little bit less thing. And then you have different medium sizes. You can go from one through six, and also large from one and two. So I decided to go large. I think that works for this demo. And then you can also change the response. And to be honest, I haven't really, I think this is how fast they're moving. So this is controls and noiseness, response curve based on the scene luminance, higher values mean less noise in light areas. Okay, so I really haven't used this, but you can play with it and see what kind of effects that gives you. So the last scene that I wanna show you, it's going to be the vignetting. So if we look at the vignetting, this one actually looked really cool. I didn't think it was gonna look that cool in AR. So it gave it a really, you know, a more polished, you know, a look and feel. And that just depends on what you want to do in your AR experience. In my case, I think I'm gonna use this a little bit more frequently. I think it just gives it, you know, a little more polish. And again, that depends on what you're looking for. This one is pretty simple. You can just change the, if you wanna change the color, you can change the color of the actual vignetting and you can see how the, the edges are gonna become red or white or depending on what color you're looking for. I think I just set mine to not have that, just by default it's black. You can also change the center value. If for whatever reason you wanted to change the center on X and Y, you can change that. You can also change the intensity if I didn't want it to be that strong, I, you know, I can change that as well. I'm gonna just undo that. And then, you know, how, how smooth you want the, the corners to be, you can also change that value. And then if you wanna have rounder corners or not, you can also change that value. So. That's basically everything that I wanted to show you today. I am going to be, again, setting, you know, making this available in Patreon. So if you guys have any questions about anything that I just show you, and make sure that you watch the previous video because the previous video will show you how this scene works and how the project is set up. So let me know if you guys have additional questions and thank you again for your time, guys. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just show you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting source code like the one that you saw at the beginning of the video and also early access to additional videos. Thank you very much, guys.